We return tonight to our ongoing series tracking first-time members of Congress. The last time we saw freshman Representative Denver Riggleman, he was learning to navigate the halls of Congress amidst a government shutdown. Four months into the job, he's now trying to balance life in D.C. with the needs of his district. Our Lisa Desjardins is back and caught up with him in his hometown. Let's do this. 8 a.m. Freshman Congressman Denver Riggleman leaves home for his makeshift operating base during recess, his family's distillery in central Virginia. We have back to back to back to back to back to back to back meetings from around noon to three. In his first four months, the gregarious Riggleman has found the job comes with critics on all sides and a relentless schedule each day. In Congress, this is work, and I think the adjustment, this isn't as fun as I thought it would be. It, it Over the next two hours, he has a tuxedo fitting for a black tie dinner in Washington, speaks to a crowd at a Vietnam veterans memorial, consoles a constituent, and at one point, searches for a phone signal for a radio interview. Whew. Riggleman, an Air Force vet and businessman, has never served in office before. Hey, Joe, it's Denver. Now the Republican represents a congressional district stretching through the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, a place of winding roads and struggling areas mixed with new wealthy residents and a rising brewery and winery industry. Riggleman is a conservative, but he speaks about reaching out to Democrats. That has Republicans questioning his loyalty. They point to his vote opposing the president's attempt to end the Affordable Care Act in court. Oh, I've heard about it. You know, when I voted, uh, you know, that we need to make sure we keep pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. I found it interesting that he said that was his number one priority. And then people who said, hey, you know, Denver, you're not supporting the Republican ticket by voting with this. I said, well, you need to talk to some of the others who are in Trump districts who voted this way also. His district is active, full of signs on a big local issue. Personal relationships matter here, as you see at Woodridge Farm Brewery in Nelson County, where locals are divided over how their area is doing. I think it's probably at the top that it's been in quite a few years. I think it's doing pretty well. The biggest issue that Nelson has is a lot of um, always finding employment. Look like the vineyard business is doing really great, but the other parts of the farming industry are not doing too good. For others, the issue is health care, taxes, or the environment. The district is a challenge, larger in size than the state of New Jersey, with cities like Charlottesville, but also many rural counties. In addition, it contains both Republican and Democratic strongholds. Larry Stoppers, a retired lumber salvager and the Democratic Party chairman in Nelson County, he's critical of Riggleman for joining the most conservative group in Congress, the Freedom Caucus. They vote with the president on issues like immigration reform. It's hard to think that you're going to join the Freedom Caucus and represent the 47 percent of the district that voted against you. Back at his house, Riggleman stresses he is in moderate and conservative groups alike. I'll meet with anybody. And I think people are a little bit intimidated by that. And I think when you see people start screaming about town halls, it's why they want to scream at me in a public forum. Because when they talk to me personally, they find out I'm a pretty reasonable guy. Um, but I am not in any way an ideologue. But Riggleman has to balance his constituents' needs with intense pressure to fundraise. I didn't realize how it worked. Man, the personal donors didn't call me at all. The corporate donors? Oh yeah, they want meetings, you know. And that's and 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 listen, that's the that's the transparency thing of this. They want meetings. I can give them a meeting, right? The issue that you have though is that they got to fit their meeting within my constituent meetings. Back at the brewery, Darcy Baker says she and her neighbors just want someone to get things done. We all want the same thing for our kids. We want a good school. We want to be able to pay our bills. Simple concepts, but brand new lawmakers like Riggleman know. Nothing in politics right now is simple. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Lisa Desjardins in Nelson County, Virginia.